Hello and welcome to VHDXV. What you've got over here is a gorgeous Jaguar F-Type, which is a V6 version. The car comes in a V6 and a V8 version as well. If you're considering getting something like this, my request to you is definitely try the V6 version. The V6 has enough power, brings in enough oomph and is an absolute beauty to drive. Beautiful design lines on the car. You've got a gorgeous, gorgeous front and some brilliant bodywork that's going around it. The car is also very well known for its exhaust note, which comes in from the 3.5 litre V6. It's got the coupe-like look, it's got the sports car-like feeling, it drives like a sports car. So what makes this car such a great value? Well, if you're considering getting yourself a car that's not very heavy on maintenance, something that's nice to zip around town and something that also gives you the sports car feeling, something to think of it as an entry into the supercar or the sports car world, this is something that you would definitely want to consider. If you're looking at buying something like this, this is just a video that you're looking for because we'll be walking over some of the aspects of the car in 2022. Does this car still make sense? The earlier generation of the F-Pace. Of course, with the new generation of the F-Pace coming in, the prices of these cars are depreciating a lot. And is this the right time for you to pick up a car like this? Let's go inside, let's talk about what the car has to offer and things that you need to look out for if you're looking at buying a used one like this one. Stay tuned. Welcome to the inside of the Jaguar F-Type. Let's fire it up and see what she sounds like. So you've got the start stop button there. That lovely, glorious exhaust note that this F-Type is specific for. And you've got that very cool blower that actually comes up when you start the car and then, you know, it goes down when it's not required. So it gives it a very nice clean look that's over there. When the ACs are off, the blower actually goes down so you don't have anything over there. You've got the nice touch of digital display over here so you can change your air speed control, you can change the temperatures and really tactile buttons over here which seem to have held up really well. Standard shifter, nothing special about over here. That's your mode selector, so it helps you change between all the different modes that you've got. That's to change your spoiler up and down. That's your traction control. And the nice thing that Jaguar has started doing is that you've got your infotainment system controlled right over here. So you really don't have to fiddle around a lot when it comes to, you know, changing the music or volumes and all of that stuff. Nice set of seat controls over here. Uh, you've got all the settings for your seats, your three-step memory and all of that. Power window comes in over here as well, so you've got that. Steering position is really good. You've got a very nice bolstering that goes in at your uh, nine, and you've got a very nice bolster that goes in at three as well. So the steering position is very good. Visibility is surprisingly good for a car that looks to be uh, so small on the outside. Of course, you've got the panel roof as well. Visibility isn't a problem on this car. So you've got visibility all around. Mirrors do a great job. You get used to it very easily. And overall, the car is a very, very good place to be in. You've got all the different mode settings over here. RPM red lines at six and a half, seven thousand 7,000 RPMs. And then you've got a speedometer that reads all the way up to 3000 rpms infotainment system feels a bit dated at this stage but it's not something that is incredibly unusable so for example you could go and the touchscreen is a little slow but it eventually gets there so you can click on the cameras and then it will pop up the rear view, rear camera uh, but you can see the graphics and everything else is not really up to the mark but then you know that's what it is Good amount of navigation as well, so it comes built in. So um, I'm not sure how well this is going to be performing against, say, an Apple CarPlay or something like that. Definitely won't be of that match, but something to consider as well. Um, again, that blower that we were talking about, once you switch it off, uh, you know, you've got a very nice set of display and that goes down. It takes a few seconds, but this is the complete look that you get once the blower goes down and a very, very clean uh, dashboard as well. And, you know, good amount of length that you can see on the front. You've got very nice uh, setup over there. Some of these buttons, they have a very good tactile feeling. Now, uh, some of these cars, blower's coming up again. On some of these used cars, you will see that this starts becoming an, an issue. You know, it's a Jaguar Land Rover, Land, Land Rover at the end of the day. So it has some issues around the plastics and the buttons especially. So that's something to uh, keep an eye, eye out as well. Overall, it's a pretty, pretty impressive car to drive around given that it's a V6. The uh, power output is good. Very, very entertaining to drive.